In this tutorial, I'm going to give you a quick overview of some of the shaders available in Mendel Core. First we have material shaders. These are shaders that are designed to be applied directly to the objects in your scene, except for the two subsurface shaders, which should be connected to the subsurface slot of one of the material shaders. We have the core material. This shader has been designed to be a mix of some of the common Maya shaders, such as Blin and Fong, combined with some of the great features of the MIA material, such as energy conservation and advanced reflection and refraction controls. It allows you to mix different specular types in one shader, as well as control settings like max distance for reflections and refractions. Next we have the core MIA material. This is exactly like the MIA material X. However, it has a few additional features, such as a subsurface perimeter. Next we have the core hair material. This shader gives you a lot of control over the look of hair and fur. It consists of three different specular types, primary specular, secondary specular and a translucent specular, as well as many parameters for variation and a ramp for the colour of the hair. The car paint material is the same as the MI car paint phenomenon and works with all the mental core passes. The core surface shader is just a flat shader that does not calculate any lighting. And finally we have the core blend materials. This allows you to blend and combine different materials together. To use it, plug a shader into the base material and another shader into one of the coat materials. The clear coat option allows you to add the specular and reflection outputs from the shader on top of the result. The blend amount controls the blend between the two shaders can be useful to map a texture in here. The two subsurface shaders are designed to be connected to the subsurface slot. See the subsurface scattering tutorial for more information. Next we have texture shaders. These are shaders that are meant to be used with texture inputs to one of the materials rather than being applied directly to the object. The core colour grade allows you to grade an input texture with options that are similar to what's available in Nuke. The core colour profile shader allows you to apply a colour profile to the input texture. This can be useful for custom shaders. The core dirt shader is useful for adding dirt and grime effects to edges of buildings. It's most useful for texturing and generally should be baked to a texture and not calculated every frame. Core Normal Map Shader allows you to apply a normal map and also control the blend. The blend value can be pushed above one. You can chain together multiple normal map shaders. Connect the out value of one into the input normals of the following shader. Core Randomizer shader allows you to randomize textures across multiple objects. You can add an unlimited amount of texture maps to be randomized across the objects and also further randomize hue, saturation and value. The Core Texture Blend shader allows you to blend together multiple textures in a layer based format as you can do in Photoshop. It contains a variety of different blending modes. Core Texture Lookup is for use with mental ray textures. It provides an easy way of working with these, similar to the way the Maya file node works. The Core Texture Merge node is a convenient way of merging together two different textures. It also allows you to apply a mask and mix the output result. The core UV tile shader allows you to combine together different UV tiles for one texture. Under environments, we also have the core environment and core spherical lookup. Core environment is created through the render globals and the core spherical lookup is a useful shader for inputting a panoramic texture and also allows you to blur it without seams. And finally under lights we have a core environment light. This should be created through the mental core menu.